is the Vanting's Imparted Years. This is a song I <laughs> I ended up doing this song in a way in a way actually actually doing this song when I did it was a bit of an accident because what I wanted to do was, this is actually a perfect segue that, that I was just doing field vibrations because what I wanted to do as my next video after um after Evo Devo, I wanted to do field vibrations. I already had this one that still isn't out in my head as like, here's what I here's what I want to do. And I spent like honestly a couple months trying to figure out how to do it properly and write it. And I just couldn't. Like I and after after a couple months of working on field vibrations and getting nowhere, it was also because because Nanobot, I knew Nanobot was coming up because I had gotten this funding from uh like from the UK to do like a, a nano robotics chemistry song. And I was like, all right, I'm going to have to do that in the new year. In the meantime, I'll do field vibrations and then field vibrations turned into such a large project that, that is so, uh, I, don't, I don't know, ambitious that I still haven't figured out how to do it. And, uh, but in my back pocket, I had written this quite a, quite a, a while before. And I had just like, it had never sort of written, risen to the top of the list. Cause I was like, you know what? It's a, stop that. <laughs> I don't like I don't like Beach Ball of Death. Um like it's I I knew it wasn't this this song wasn't going to be a smash hit, right? Because it's just like the um Barrett's Privateers is a really niche song. Like hands up who knew the song Barrett's Privateers before I uh bef before you heard me do this song and particularly who of you knew it who isn't already Canadian. <laughs> um because this is Barrett's Privateers is, is like a, a very particular song. Um, it's got it's got like a particular place in um, in sort of Canadian culture um, because it was written in the fifties by this guy called Stan Rogers, um, who's kind of like I don't know he's like one of our Canadian you know sort of Canadian national bards of sorts, um, and uh, he he was super into sort of the sea shanty form. And so he wrote, he wrote this this song called ba uh, Barrett's Privateers, which is all about this young boy who gets on a gets on a pirate ship in uh, in on the east coast of Canada, and he's you know he's it's like like the, so the actual chorus is like I I I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold, we'd fire no guns, shed no tears, but I'm a broken man. On a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers, right? And so, like in the original story, you know, it's this young boy who goes off thinking that he's gonna like be a be a pirate and like get some American gold and treasure and whatever. And actually, what happens is that his pirate ship is is super terrible, and um, you know, he loses both of his legs when when the enemy ship like actually absolutely demolishes them, and he winds up back on the on this Halifax pier like 20 years later just singing the song and uh it's, it's, it, it, yeah it's it's a it's sort of one of these these like tragic sea shanties it's a bit of a weird sea, sea shanty because it's not it doesn't have a regular meter so like classic sea shanties um will have a very steady pulse like a, like something you could really stomp your foot to and the reason they have that is because the purpose of a sea shanty is to make you, you know, it's a it's a work song, right? It's it's meant for you to be like rhythmic while you're working on a ship. And uh, so this one, like the fact that it's got this, like like it kind of works, like you can still stomp to it, but it's it's not it's not even like and then like like it's not an even like multiple of two or whatever or like like power of two for the for the number of bars. Um, but it, it was, it, if even so it was such an effective, uh, like rendition of a sea shanty that a lot of bands now have like covered Barrett's privateers, like, like a, a lot of sort of like, I don't know, like Scottish, uh, like uh, Scottish and Irish, like pub bands will do covers of Barrett's privateers in like their repertoire of like, you know, old sailory piratey sort of songs. And they, you know, they have stories about how it comes from, you know, like it's based on a real story and it was written by this actual guy in like the 18 or 17 or 1800s or whatever. And it's total, it's it's not true at all. It's, you know, Stan Rogers wrote it in the 50s. Um, anyways, um, so this is my, but but like the fact that it's about this, this, you know, 
this guy who has a really hard life and is broken um, by the end of it. Um, sort of made me made me think of the story of Banting and uh, shoot, what is his name? I always forget his name. It's in the, it's in the description. You know, whoops, that's F one. That's Google Chrome. Um, what is his name? The 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 guy because I didn't put I didn't put his name in the in the actual uh, in the in the actual song, which means that I don't remember it because I'm absolutely abominable with name. Leonard Leonard Thompson. Thank you, Jonathan Haywood, saving me from embarrassment. Um, hey, look, it is it is me and me and Grant on on at the same time, uh, right here. <laughs> Go Grant, doing doing log log a b equals log a plus log b. Good thing to know. Um, so so it, like it's like the story of Leonard Thompson is like I don't know it it strikes me because it's like it's sad but it's also like it it was like he got he got this new lease on life he was you know he was like a kid with diabetes type type one diabetes which is gonna is like a death sentence at the time as I say in the song because the whole method of uh, the whole method of of treating you was just to starve you basically so you didn't overload your blood sugar and uh but at the same time leonard so so when insulin came along um leonard thompson was you know like at nest at death's door and he got this whole new lease on life and he st but he still died at uh, at 27 um of pneumonia and uh like you know so it's it's kind of this like i don't know there's so there's something about like bittersweet and like that thinking thinking back on a life and being i don't know grateful for the ex for the time that you had and the extension of life that you had even though life is fine is ultimately finite i don't know there's something poignant about that so oh i wrote this chorus i think i i wrote this chorus um i don't know i was really sick at one point i think also when i was when i was writing this and uh sort of think thinking about mortality i guess and came up with the chorus and then and then went from there anyways let's watch it this you will remember. I was I was still on that Evo Devo, that kick of starting new videos with with bits of old videos. This is uh, an image of Darwin's um, beagle, which is going to be in the background the whole time. It has nothing to do with the song, but uh, the HMS Beagle. Um. <coughs> I think oh, it, they like I was th I was thinking like it, it would have been nice to do graphics for this. I just couldn't figure out a way to make it work because it's like it's such a weird juxtaposition to have kind of these like this like sea shanty feel like stripped down, you know, just just guys singing and, and stomping their feet and also to figure out a way to do that kind of like technological whizzing in and out graphic stuff. I just couldn't really make it work. So I decided, you know, what, for this one, we're just going to we're just going to strip it, strip it down. I uh, spent a while going to the Salvation Army trying to find good good sailory clothes to fit these five guys. Here was 1910 and 8, and to think I take up sugar now. At 11 years old, my fate was wrung by the death of me. I let so longer hums no bell them all. I think the first thing I recorded in this was actually those stomps. Like, I just, I just kept my microphone where it was, and I did a few takes of me, like, stomping on the I think to a click track. Um, but just like stomping on the ground in my studio, I think with, with like a couple different, like with my bare feet and then like with, sh with shoes on and stuff, I got like a few different sounds and then I mixed them together to make that like stomp in the background. And then that's what I sang over. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son. Dried her tears, now I'm a croaking man, but I'll never more fear the last of Banting's imparted years. Yeah, I, I was sort of, I was sort of trying to capture that, like, like there's this kind of roughness of like, like we're just pushing through life that comes through in a lot in a lot of these old songs, right? Like, like even if it's singing about, like, sort of the modern the modern day way of doing emotionality in songs a lot of the time is like, if you if you're doing something. You know, if you're doing something sensitive, then you, you know, you like make a really sensitive voice, right? Like the, you know, the cold play, like, it be worse, like that kind of thing. You're like feeling it. But like in kind of these, these work songs, like, I don't know, these and also like the slave songs back in the day, like sometimes they're singing about really, you know, really crazy, you know, like, like really, really hard life stuff. But it's, there's, there's kind of a, 
it there's also a vibe of like but we don't have but we don't have time to like sit down and and cry about it like we just have to push through and that really becomes part like part of the feel of the song it's like you're you're just carrying on you know and so i was uh, like that's something that always comes through in these things i was sort of trying to give that vibe i don't know i'm not really a rough sailor type so see how i did Young Frederick Banting cried aloud, and to think I take up sugar now. Woo! Through shelling and fire, he scorned his wounds till the fallen. I mean, that's still a little weird. And bound. No bell them all. I was I was trying to figure out like, I shot all this thinking that these guys would be on the screen the whole time, because you know that I I want it to be as as realistic as possible. But then I'm just so awkward, like standing there all the time. And I was like, no, even even though it's kind of fake and like, I don't know, it's better than just having these four standing in place for every verse and like looking awkwardly from side to side. It's 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 too it's too weird. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. Diabetes then was a sickening plight. And, and to think I take up sugar now. Woo! We down the least that a man could scoff till the famine or saccharide capped us off. Nope. I, I really I really like that. <clears throat> it's it's hard to get it's hard to get good rhythmic rhyming phrases that say what you want them to say. And and also in this case, there in this one there's kind of the like the additional constraint of like the way that the words go needs to sound. It, it needs to sound a certain way. It needs to get, give you that that like working working sort of feel, um, and a a way to say that the you know we basically just had to not eat not eat much to keep our uh, our blood sugar down, and it's kind of a trade off of whether the you know the food the lack of food or the high blood sugar kills you first, which is like a really sad way to go. But like being able to capture it in that one line, we down the least that a man could scoff till the famine or saccharide capped us off. Um, that was pretty good because I spent a while looking for like, like old timey versions of words too. Like, how do you say eat in all sorts of weird ways? And scoff was one of them. So. Bell them all. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son. Dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. The which, which is your favorite of, of these characters? Let me know in the chat. Simcoe Doc was a knife by trade, and to think I take up sugar now. I, and I, I mean, I don't even know if that's a that's a sensible thing to say. What I'm trying to say there is that he he started as a surgeon, um, and he came from Simcoe. It was a knife by trade. It's a bit it's, it's metaphorical. It works. Oh, when the practice failed, he said his jaw to the treatment of glycosuria. <laughs> no bell them all. So glycosuria is if, bless, uh, like the the name for diabetes. Glycosuria comes from the fact that you know, it it was your high high sugar would lead to high sugar content in your urine, and your your urine smell you know your urine smells like uh, smells like sugar, and it's one of the signs of diabetes. Um, so glycosuria meaning glycos meaning sugar, and urea referring to urine. Glycosuria. I'm channeling Chubby Emu. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son. Dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. The pancreas form had long been known, and to think I take up sugar now. Woo! I let that curb sugar low or high in digestive fluid from the ass and I know. Nope. So, uh, yeah, so there's the Langerhans, for whom the islets of Langerhans are named, did a lot of work figuring out the pancreas, um, dissecting and such. Found these little islets of cells that are the islet there are the bits that actually um, secrete insulin, so that's known as the the islets of Langerhans. And then your pancreas has, but your pancreas has more functions than just secreting insulin. It also secretes, you know, digestive juices into your uh, into your duodenum to to gi digest your food. Um, as you will know if you have if you've ever listened to, I, I would say that this is my second favorite song about pancreases. Uh, my first favorite being the Weird Al song, um, My Pancreas, which is, uh, you know, you gotta flow, 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 pancreatic juice, flow, flow, into the duodenum, won't you flow, 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 pancreatic juice, 
into the duodenum, insulin, glucagon, coming from the islets of Langerhans. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Weird, Weird Al has kind of beat me to it on the on the exploring the science of the pancreas, but I took it in a different direction. Bell them all. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son, dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. He worked as long, I withered and waned. And to think I take up sugar now. Woo! Sweating with best in animal trials to wring an elixir from the tiny <laughs> aisles. No bell them all. <laughs> this guy on the right. <laughs> this is weird. But like, you know, they always do like see if you watch like sea shanty groups, they always do they always have this like you know, like anyone can sort of like throw in a whoop for a random thing and I wanted to get that vibe. But it's it's just like like when you're doing it. <laughs> When you're doing it in a digital audio workstation, it's it's like a weird process because you you get really hyper analytical about it. At least I do. Like, okay, where should there be a whoop? <laughs> is there is it good to put a whoop here? Should I move this whoop over there? And it's like it's it's very it's very strange. Um, yeah, they were doing like the way that they produced insulin back in the old days um, was the only way you could get it was from animal pancreases. You know, you just have to have to like distill it out of out of animal pancreases. Um, and put it in humans. Um, nowadays, we uh, we have you know engineered microbes that produce insulin much more effectively. So we don't we no longer have to you know slaughter animals for their for their pancreases, which is nice. Oh, I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son. Dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. I think that I think the the animal trials they did were in dogs. They, they either they they had a way of inducing, like I guess maybe they just took out the pancreases of dogs, um, so that so they could induce diabetes and then see if they could, you know, f isolate the particular part from another dog or another animal of some kind as insulin that would, uh, um. To, that that would uh, you know effectively cure them for the moment. Um, this is a really song song fun. This is a really song fun to do live. Um, it, it like because live is a lot more forgiving of repetition. Like I I think a few people found this song a little boring because there's so many courses and they're all the same. Like I didn't I didn't use different courses at the same time. Um, while Pedro, I'm almost sure they used pigs. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Um, that that I I think that's right, but I, I I don't know. I think there were a few different animal animals that they got them from at first. It wasn't just one species. Um, uh, so, there were, but like live, it works really well because I can teach people this chorus and then like have them clap along, and then every chorus people can like come back in. And this song, like what Marshall McLuhan said about the medium is the message and you know, how the, the medium of your work determines how it's received. Um, this is like sea shanties are a song are songs that are made for community and for audience and for participation. And they're not really made for YouTube videos. So it was like, I was kind of front loading the knowledge that this wouldn't be like a huge viral hit, but that I could bust it out and sing it with people whenever I did a show and they would really enjoy it. So, you know, different things. Then at length on death's cold mental I lay And to think I take up sugar now Woo! The extract was drawn and the hype went in in the f That's kind of a stretch too. I think I'm using hype as a short form for hypodermic needle, um, which I don't think is popular parlance. People will usually say a sharp. Um, but I, I I didn't like, I tried, the extract was drawn and the sharp went in, but it was like, it, it, it just didn't feel right to me. So I ended up going with hype. Um, but as as far as I know, no one you really uses hype to mean hypodermic needle. But hey, maybe I can start it. Until I lay and to think I take up sugar now. Woo! The extract was drawn and the hype went in in the first air treatment Woo! of insulin. No bell them all. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother her son. Dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Benting's imparted years. Yeah, you have to be so conservative with like, like word choice. Like, I mean, like there's so few words that you can use. You have to make sure that you're you're saying something that's at least doesn't have any other meanings. Like, if I said the extract was drawn and drawn and the stick went in, 
there's a lot of things you could you know think about about where a stick might go <laughs> and what is what stick might mean. It's too broad of a term. My vigor returned, and in truth I thrive. And to think I take up sugar now. <laughs> I, I love that moment where this guy goes off the rails, and, the, and this one like looks over at him. Um, that's a uh, parted years. My over, vigor over returned, and in truth I thrive. And to think I take up like, sugar now. It's like, all right, all right, man. Venting and co shared a Nobel Prize, and the work saved no that of a million <laughs> lives. No bell them all. I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son, dried her tears. Now I'm a broken man, but I'll never more fear the last of Bentings imparted years. So here I lay in my 28th year, and to think I take up sugar now. And to think I take up sugar <laughs> so- Doing, doing a little bit of the, of the voices, but it's, it's, I don't know, I think it works here. The pneumonia's fast in both me lungs, but I want no eyelets of longer hands. No be- I mean, I'm sure he'd still be happy for to have eyelets of longer hands, but, like, it's, the, 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 I don't know, the idea there is, like, you know, being grateful for what you've been given and, and knowing that you got more than, than maybe you, you know, than fate would have had you get. Um, yeah, I don't know. Tell them all, I was lost to cruel disease when a miracle cure saved mother, her son, dried her tears. Now I'm a croaking man, but I'll never more fear the last of Banting's imparted years. A far left sudden gentle voice, but his awkward side glance. <laughs> yeah. Are the new viewers? Viewers gone yet? Hey there, musical scientist. <laughs> That's a Zay Frank joke. Hope you enjoyed this very Canadian song about a very Canadian discovery. Have I mentioned that I'm Canadian? I'm Canadian. I'm Canadian, guys. The narrator in the song was actually a real person named Leonard Thompson. There we go. I do mention and near it. Death, Just at the he was end. the first person in the world to receive an insulin shot and managed to live all the way to 27 before dying of pneumonia. You can find out more about Leonard Thompson and Banting's discovery of insulin by following the links in the description. And I've also put links to support diabetes research in Canada and the US. Type 1 diabetes can be effectively managed by insulin, but we still don't actually have a cure. If you'd like to support my works of musical science, you can do so on patreon.com slash acapella science, just like all these lovely people you see scrolling. I- I like I like this like I don't know this is a, this is the first end screen that I've watched so far that I've been like oh yeah that that feels like me like it's it's like a it's still a little heightened version of me like when you're when you're talking after a bit of a hyped up video you got to uh, you know you you got to you you, you got to be a little more energetic but I f- I feel a lot more natural here and one of the reasons is it's just like low key like I'm not like I didn't set up a camera and you know, make sure everything was good and get the lighting right. And okay, like I'm going to do, I've got to do my first take. What do I say? What do I say? It was just like, all right, let's turn it on. And that's what I've realized with these streams too. It's like, don't prep, turn it on. You'll be more natural, even if it's a little weirder. Rolling down here and stick around, subscribe. I know this one took a while to get out, but in the new year, I'm already working with a couple of really cool science labs and you're going to really like what you see in the next couple of months. Right, that's it. Yeah, that was uh, lampshading or, or, you know, teasing the nanobot video in the end. For me, my name is Tim Blay. You've been watching Acapella Science. Acapella Science. <laughs> Just let it fall. Um, Jan Hoffman says, have you noticed that the chroma keying you used here took the green tint from your eyes? Interesting. I was wondering why your eyes looked off in all five Tims. Um, I don't I don't think I have much of a green tint in my eyes. You might be, like, my, my eyes are pretty close to that color naturally, but I did... You're right. I probably did stand a little close to the green screen because I can see the green. I, I can still see the green like reflecting off of my cheeks here, which probably means that I had to do a little a, a little bit of green removal on my whole self to. I... Hello, we're back. Sorry. Um, that was uh that was my 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 vocal box dying because I didn't charge it enough. <laughs> so. We're we're back. We're back. Um, we will have no. Uh... Let's see if I can loop with this. Hello, 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 hello. Cool, I can. Um, okay. Uh, well, that was a weird way to end the video, but <laughs> that's that's how it's gonna be. We're gonna we're gonna go over here. So, I think should we do?